punctiliest of greetings to you. Who are you? I am your storyteller. They call me Chip the Chiller. And you know, I have friends in Scotland who tell me about an old tradition in Scotland that the last person to be buried in a graveyard becomes the guardian of that graveyard. It is their job to scare away the thieves who might steal flowers from the graves, the vandals who might draw rude messages on the grave stones, and the litterbugs who might leave crisp packets in the grass. But the scariest of all these guardians was the one they call Cold Johnny. Johnny particularly loved being the guardian of his graveyard. If anybody in that village went anywhere near that graveyard, then they would feel a cold bony finger tapping them on the shoulder. And when they turned around, there would be Johnny, that skeleton standing in front of their face with teeth grinning from ear hole to ear hole and a shining blue light in his wispy eyes. And they would get so scared, they would turn and run straight out of the story. This village didn't have a milkman anymore because one day the milkman had just been wandering past the kirkyard of this village when he had felt a bony finger tapping him on the shoulder and he turned around to see there was that skeleton with the wispy blue eyes and the teeth grinning from ear hole to ear hole and he got so scared he turned and ran straight out of the story he hadn't been thieving he hadn't been a vandal he'd just been a milkman but still Cold Johnny loved his job so much that anybody wandering past that kirkyard would feel the cold bony finger tapping them on the shoulder. They'd turn around and there would be that skeleton with the blue light shining there in his eyes and the teeth grinning from ear hole to ear hole. And they would turn and run straight out of the story. It is for that reason that this village didn't have very many people living in it anymore. The only people living in the village by the time this story began were the sort of people who didn't actually go out their houses much. The people who didn't want to go out of their houses because they would rather spend all their time sitting down and counting their money. The greedy ones, the miserly ones, but for this story to begin, we actually need to leave that village for the moment and go to a wild and lonely glen a little further along where there lived a mum, a dad, and a wee laddie. This family weren't very rich. In fact, they were rather poor. And the mum and the dad began to worry that they didn't have enough money to look after their little laddie anymore. But it was all okay. They knew it would be okay because he had an aunt and uncle who were very rich. They could send him to live with them and he would be looked after, he would be happy. So that's what the mum and dad did at the start of this story. They sent their wee laddie to the wilder and lonelier glen, which just happened to be the glen with the village of Cold Johnny. And because it was that village, you will already realize that the aunt and uncle of this laddie were not very nice people. If they lived in that village by now, they had to be the kind of people who did nothing all day but count their money. That's all they wanted to do. They didn't want to leave their house. They were crabby and they were grabby and they didn't want to have this little laddie living with them. 
they hated the idea. As soon as he arrived, they took him in because he was family, but they started treating him like Cinderella, giving him all the horrible jobs to do in the house. Jobs like washing all of the dirty dishes with his bare hands. Jobs like cleaning the chimney with his hair. And jobs like cleaning the toilet with his toothbrush. And they didn't treat him very kindly either. The only food they gave him was the bread that had gone mouldy in the cupboards. Even so, after a certain amount of time, the aunt and uncle decided this was still too expensive for them. It was costing them too much money to go out and buy that bread and leave it in the cupboard long enough to get mouldy just so they could give it to that laddie. They wanted to get rid of him. But they couldn't just do that themselves. That would get them in trouble. If a grown-up does something nasty to a child, that's the sort of thing that can put them in jail. And, well, they didn't want to go to jail. If they were in jail, they wouldn't be able to spend all day of every day counting their money. So they had to think of a way they could get rid of that laddie without it looking like they were the ones who got rid of that laddie. And then they remembered. They happened to live in the same village as Cold Johnny. All they had to do was send him up the hill to the kirkyard and he would get that cold bony finger tapping on his shoulder. He would turn around and there would be that skeleton or with the blue light shining in his eyes and the teeth going from lug hole to lug hole. And he would get so scared, he would run straight out of the story and the aunt and uncle would never have to worry about him ever again. So, the aunt put on her kindest voice and called the laddie by saying, Oh, laddie! Now, I don't know if that sounds kind to you, but remember, the laddie hadn't heard his aunt and uncle use kind words for him ever. So this actually sounded straight away like something really unusual. And the aunt called him and, and said, We have decided we're going to make a really delicious soup, a family recipe. And because it's a family recipe, we think you should get to try it. There's just one wee ingredient that we do not have in the house. And that is a flour, a very special kind of flour that you can only find in the kirkyard. Could you go get it for us? And the laddie replied, OK, and went straight out from the house without a moment's thought. He didn't even put his shoes on, partly because he didn't have any shoes. So he just went straight out the door and up the hill in the direction of the kirkyard. And as he approached the kirkyard gates, he felt a cold bony finger tapping him on the shoulder. He turned around and there was that skeleton with the blue light shining in his eyes, the teeth grinning from lug hole to lug hole. And the laddie said, oh, hello. Oh, I've never seen a lad like you. You know, we could be friends. We would be great friends. You know, I don't have any friends at the moment. And I think it would be really great if you and I could be friends. We could be the best of best of best of best of friends. You know, we'll be go everywhere together. We'll do things together. We'll play together. Oh, we'll be able to do so many great things together. Come on, let's be friends. We'll be friends. Please be my friend. We'll be best friends. I'll be the best friend to you. You'll be the best friend to me. Come on, let's be friends. <laughs> now, Johnny wasn't expecting that. Johnny didn't really do friends. He didn't want friends. And to be honest, this laddie was already really starting to annoy him. All he wanted to do was get rid of that boy, but his usual method, scaring people away, that didn't seem to be working. 
So he just turned to the boy and said, what do you want? And the laddie explained that he had been sent there by his aunt in order to find a special kind of flower that you can only find at the kirkyard. Well, Johnny scratched his skull. What kind of flower can you only find at a kirkyard? Johnny couldn't really think. He, he looked around and the, the only thing that came to mind were the flowers that had been left as gifts by the graves. I mean, sure, they had been bought in a shop, but at that point, they had been gifts. They hadn't been left as gifts. It's not the kind of distinction that Johnny would usually make, but on this occasion, that was the only idea that came to his mind. So he got one of those flowers, shoved it in the laddie's chest and said, go on, take that, be off with you, and don't come back. Meanwhile, the aunt and the uncle were so pleased to have finally got rid of the laddie that they had taken two tall glasses and poured them with champagne and were just about to go when there was a knock at the door. Can you make the sound of a knock at the door? The aunt and the uncle weren't used to that kind of sound because, well, remember, they were crabby, they were grabby, they didn't have any friends themselves. They didn't want any friends. So they were very suspicious as they put down their glasses and went to the door, opened them up, and there was the laddie, bearing some flowers. And the aunt didn't know what to make of this because, well, clearly, if he'd got these flowers, he can't have gone to the kirkyard because if he'd gone to the kirkyard, cool, Johnny would have scared him out of the story. But she couldn't let on that she needed him to go to the graveyard for some scary reason because then the boy might know that something was up. So she took the flowers and thought very quickly before saying, oh, Thank you, laddie. You know, these are lovely, but there's another wee ingredient we don't have in the house that we need to make our special family soup. And that is a stone. A special kind of stone that you can only find in the kirkyard. <laughs> Could you go get it for us? And the laddie replied, okay, and left straight through the door and went back up the hill towards the kirkyard. And as he got close to the kirkyard gates, he felt that cold bony finger tapping him on the shoulder. He turned around and saw the skeleton of Carl Johnny standing before him with that eerie blue light in his wispy eyes, those teeth grinning from lug hole to lug hole. And he said, oh, hello again. See, we're seeing each other again. That's what friends do, isn't it? That's what pals do. We see each other again. We see each other again and again. We could be great pals. We could be the best of pals. Will you be my pal? I'll be your pal. I'll be a great pal. Look, I always come back. That's how great a pal I am. Come on, let's be pals. Well, called Johnny really didn't do pals. He didn't want any pal. So he tried to find out from the laddie why he had come back. And the laddie explained that he had been sent by his aunt to find a stone, a special kind of stone that you can only find in the kirkyard. And Johnny scratched his skull. What kind of stone can you only find in a kirkyard? A gravestone, maybe? That was the only kind of stone that Johnny could look around and see that he wouldn't expect to find anywhere else. So he went over to his own gravestone, summoned his supernatural strength to smash it into pieces. He took one of those pieces and thrust it into the chest of the laddie and said, now get out of here and don't come back. Meanwhile, 
the aunt and the uncle had so much pleasure finally getting rid of the boy that they had taken their tall glasses of champagne and were just about to go when they heard a knock at the door. And as before, they weren't used to getting knocks at the door, especially twice in one day. That was very much unexpected. That had never happened before. So, a little bit grumpy, they went over to the door and opened it up to see there was the laddie, bearing in his hands a stone. He couldn't have got that stone from the kirkyard. If he had gone to the kirkyard, then surely Cold Johnny would have frightened him away. But when the aunt took it from him, she saw some letters on the stone. R I J O. This couldn't be what she thought it was, could it? Surely, called Johnny, if he was there, he would have frightened away this boy. The only thing that made any sense to the aunt was that Johnny must be scaring somebody else away at the same time. What she needed was a way to keep the laddie in that kirkyard so there was absolutely no chance of him going anywhere before Cold Johnny had found him. And that gave her an idea. She said to the laddie, Oh, thank you, laddie. The stone is great, but there is still one ingredient, one wee ingredient we need for a special family soup that we don't have in the house. And that would be a bone. The special kind of bone you can only find in the kirkyard. Can't you go fetch that for us? Okay, said the laddie, and through the door he went straight up the hill. And as he approached the kirkyard yet, Cold Johnny was already sitting there on the graveyard wall with his skull in his bony fingers. And as he saw the laddie approached, he said, What do you need this time? And the laddie explained that he had been sent to the kirkyard by his aunt to fetch a bone. A special kind of bone that you could apparently only find in a kirkyard. What kind of bone could you only find in a kirkyard? Cold Johnny thought he knew the answer to this one straight away. A bone from a dead body. And of course, Cold Johnny looked down at his own skeletal body. And he looked down at his legs in particular. Do you know how many bones you have in your legs? 20 million is one guess that we've got down here. Three is another guess we've got coming out from here. Somewhere between those two is the actual answer. You would have, not including the foot, you would have four bones in your leg. One big one at the top, two for the bottom half, and the cap over the knee. And Johnny thought that was actually a few too many. So he went and took one of the bones from his lower leg, passed that to the laddie and said, here, take this, now get out. And meanwhile, back at the house, the aunt and the uncle had taken their glasses of champagne, so delighted to be finally rid of that laddie. And they were just about to go when they heard a knock at the door. Well, this was unprecedented to have three knocks in one evening. It couldn't be the laddie. It really couldn't be the laddie. And yet when they went and opened the door, there stood the laddie, bearing in his hands a bone. As the aunt took the bone, it sent chills down her spine. 
all of the butchers would be shut in a normal village. And don't forget, in this village, the butcher had already been scared away by cold Johnny. And anyway, this was too big to be an animal bone. But surely, surely the laddie could not have dug this up from the kirkyard, because if he had, surely Carl Johnny would have come and scared him away. As the aunt and the uncle were wrestling with this conundrum in their heads, it just so happened that there was another knock at the door. And when they opened it, there was no one there. They both came out of the house and looked up the hill. There was no one there. They looked down the hill, but there was no one there. Then at exactly the same time, they both felt a bony finger tapping them on their shoulders. And there was the skeleton of Cold Johnny behind them, with his glowing blue eyes and his teeth grinning from lug hole to lug hole. And both the aunt and the uncle immediately dropped down dead. Now, because the aunt and the uncle didn't have any children of their own, all of their great wealth ended up going to their next of kin, their nephew, the laddie who took all those riches back to his wild and lonely gen to find his mum and dad and share it with them. So that family could end this story living very happily for the rest of their lives. Cole Johnny, of course, was no longer the last person to be buried in that kirkyard. So he was no longer the guardian of that kirkyard. And finally, he got to enjoy some peace. But now, if you go to that wilder and lonelier glen, you will know you are in the right village because that kirkyard doesn't just have one guardian. It actually has Thank you so much for surviving that story with me. I think it has to be one of my favorite scary stories ever. And if you like scary stories too, that one came from my friends in Scotland, but I have another from my own part of the world, the east of England, that I will share with you as your bonus story. All you have to do is complete my epic challenge. Follow the instructions below to get started. But right now, it only remains for me to say cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon.